Diot. Vaibhav Sangvi, CEO of uh, Ask uh, Hedge Solution, joins us on the show. Hi, Vaibhav. Good afternoon and good to see you in as always. Vaibhav, what's your sense now? How's the positioning now in terms of the book, the long shot positioning? How is it? I think, uh, you know, we have one of uh, bigger events from a risk perspective lying ahead. While uh, the result may be a foregone conclusion, but uh, as a student of risk, we generally would probably go into this event, you know, tightly hedged, uh, you know, purely because our characteristic of our portfolio is to have a very low volatility or probably consistent returns over a period of time. So uh, in, in these kind of binary situations, uh, we actually are either are, uh, you know, sitting on the side, waiting for the outcome to kind of pan out and probably then taking the uh, positions of the portfolio in a directional way. Otherwise, uh, the long and short would be evenly matched. Mm. It's been about two months since, uh, you know, this fund started. Are you fully invested, Webha? Yeah, uh, I mean, we have around about 70 odd percent invested into the fund, okay. uh, you know, currently. So uh, in that perspective, I think we are close to our longer term averages in terms of our deployments, at least on the gross side. So Webha, what are uh, fresh ideas, if any fresh themes? We're starting a fresh new year. At the end of uh, for one that's had some very, very sizable gains. So I guess, you know, uh, it's going to be a tall ask. So, you know, anything fresh on the mind or are you still sticking to the old themes? And in which case, just recap them for us. No, of course, Surbhi. I think uh, the theme which is going to be there for the next year, I think it is large caps uh, which are going to dominate in terms of our market performance. And the reasons, again, just to reiterate very quickly, is that India has now kind of increased the MSCI emerging market weight round about from 8% to now 70 odd percent. Uh, in the situation or in a, uh, in a place where uh, global interest rates have kind of topped out and are looking to come down, though gradually, uh, we can see some sizable inflows coming into emerging markets on an overall basis. And we have always seen that whenever there is a sizable flow from an FPI perspective, the first point of interest is generally the large caps. Also in mind is basically last two and a half years, the net inflow from an FPI perspective it has been virtually neutral or nil. So I think we are at a situation or at a point where FPI ownership as a market cap, as a percentage of market cap is low. Interest rates topped out, likely to come down. Uh, we can see some uh, you know, very aggressive flows coming from the next year perspective, which brings to us the focus in terms of the whole large cap universe. So, which is what is evident from today's move as well. What is the number, the SI ownership here in India? It's come down to what, high teens? No, in fact, uh, the if you see from the last decade ownership, I think FPI ownership on NSE 200 is close to about, say, 16, 17% as compared right. to 21, 22%, which was there. Which so right. probably we are at a decade and low. Got it. They're missing out on the party then. Maybe uh, they'll have to come in, but they'll have to come in at higher levels. Uh, Fibov, uh, you know, this. In, the biggest leader of this past one year has been the PSUs. Now, many people said, you know, they're done at every stage, at the end of the first quarter, second quarter. They just kept doing better and better. How much of steam is left in the, some of these PSU names? And what's your view? See, if you look from a valuations perspective, I think a lot of the valuation gap which was there in terms of PSU versus the private sector, I, I think to a great extent has been bridged. But the way we would probably be looking from a PSU basket uh, in future is basically that those uh, sectors and companies which are backed by strong structural reforms vis-a-vis uh, -vis the other ones which are pure cyclical. Uh, and we would want to probably focus on those reform-oriented uh, you know, government-focused, government-backed uh, kind of PSUs or something, uh, you know, like anything to do with the PLI, Make in India or defense sector. So all of those are the segments where we would probably focus on going forward as compared to the other traditional cyclical ones. Hmm. Uh, give us the broad construct of your, what are your long ideas right now? What, you know, how are you balancing it? Where are you short? See, from a long perspective, I think what, as a theme, what we are, you know, kind of bullish, as I did mention very shortly, is on the whole industrial space, which would include cap codes, uh, you know, uh, PLIs, defense, uh, and renewables in that kind of order. So 
Uh, that is something which we are bullish on. Second, from a consumer discretionary perspective is something where uh, on a selective basis, we are kind of keen, uh, you know, have some uh, interest in. Uh, otherwise, I think from a bottom-up perspective, uh, also from some pharma stories, and from our, again, uh, one more sector, which is IT, which we do think from the next two quarters uh, is something where uh, probably the worst would be over and we can probably look at to go on long on. Whereas from a short perspective, I think we we are not very excited about the consumer staples, uh, you know, as a segment and probably are neutral on, uh, you know, banking and finance as well. So these are the kind of broader uh, sectoral bets, you know, from a long and short perspective. Okay. Uh, just to get your sense on the best performing parts of the market uh, this year, Webhav. So, you know, whether you're looking at real estate, sectors had a great run. If you're looking at PSUs, stocks are up between 100, 200, 3 percent. Uh, and then there is a whole CapEx theme, right, where, uh, again, stocks have rallied a lot on the capital goods side, on the manufacturing side. Uh, so here, where do you still find uh, valuation comfort? Where would you still be willing to make fresh purchases? Unfortunately, if you ask me, Surbhi, I think the valuation comfort isn't there, uh, you know, uh, to a very, very great, uh, you know, level. But uh, still, we would probably be continue to back the whole industrial space cap, cap, uh, capex theme. Uh, purely because one, on a structural basis, I think this is a story which is likely to continue for the next five to ten years. And you know, we don't mind getting into these names, even if they are a tad expensive as compared to your previous averages. Otherwise, from a real estate kind of sector, I think uh, what, the way we are seeing is basically real estate prices versus real estate stock prices. Uh, my sense is basically the real estate price will kind of, uh, you know, not depreciate and try keep on kind of gradually appreciating purely because the input costs are pretty, you know, have kind of uh, moved up a lot. Uh, whereas the real estate uh, stock prices or company uh, fundamental prices, I think we are changing, we have changed as a street to kind of valuation matrix from an NAV perspective to price to sales or price to pre-sales and so on and so forth, which is where my uh, slight discomfort is. So maybe at good size, steep correction, probably from a real estate basket is something where we will, uh, you know, get positive on, but otherwise till then we will probably avoid. Okay. Thank you, Webha, for uh, joining in. Enjoy your long weekend. We look forward to another chat. Uh, we will slip into a short break on that note. On the other side, we'll get you a few BTST calls from our technical experts. Stay tuned.